Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about pure substances and kinetic molecular theory of matter. This will be the first quarter topic and learning competency number 3. This topic is under the Matatag curriculum. In activating prior knowledge, begin the lesson by asking the students what do you already know about the different states of matter, and then encourage students to share their ideas and observations about the states of matter such as solid, liquid, and gas. Ask students to describe the properties of each state of matter such as the solid liquid volume compressibility, liquid shape volume compressibility, and gases shape volume and compressibility. Record the students' responses on the board or a projector creating a visual reference. Prompt students to share any experiences or experiment they had that demonstrate the differences between the states of matter. In establishing purpose of the lesson, you are going to explain to the students that they will be learning about the pure substances and how the kinetic molecular theory can be used to describe the behavior of particles in these substances. Another part of establishing purpose of the lesson is unlocking content vocabulary. So here, the students will match the key vocabulary terms to their corresponding definition reinforcing their understanding of the concept. So invite students to come up one at a time and match a definition card to the appropriate vocabulary terms. As each student makes a match, have them explain why they think the definition matches the terms. In the developing and deepening of understanding, so we are going to discuss the lesson one, which is all about the elements and compound. So let us start by defining what is an element. So element is a fundamental substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical means. Elements are the most basic building blocks of matter consisting only one type of atom. The following are the characteristics of element. So the first one is the fundamental substances. So elements are the most basic forms of matter that cannot be decomposed into simpler substances through chemical reaction. They are the fundamental building blocks from which all other substances are made. Another characteristic of element is the consist of one type of atom. So each element is composed of a single type of atom which is unique to that element. So the atom of an element all have the same number of protons in their nucleus which determines the element's identity. The following are some of the common examples of elements, and this includes the hydrogen, oxygen, iron, gold, carbon, sodium, and chlorine. 
Another characteristics of element is the representation on the periodic table. So elements are organized and represented on the periodic table, which is a tabular arrangement of the known elements. The periodic table provides information about the properties and characteristics of each element, such as its atomic number, atomic mass, and chemical reactivity. The following are some examples of elements and compounds found in everyday life. So the first element is the oxygen in the air. So the oxygen is an essential element that makes up about 21% of the Earth's atmosphere. So it is vital for the respiration of living organisms and is used in various industrial and medical applications. The next element is the iron in tools. So iron is a common metallic element used in the production of various tools, machinery, and construction materials. So it is known for its strength, durability, and magnetic properties. Another element is the gold in jewelry. So gold is a precious metallic element valued for its beauty, rarity, and the resistance to corrosion. So it is commonly used in the creation of jewelry such as rings, necklaces, and earrings. So now let us define what is a compound. So a compound is a substance made up of two or more different types of atoms chemically bonded together in a fixed proportion. So compounds have a definite and consistent chemical composition which distinguishes them from mixtures. The following are the characteristics of a compound. So the first one, it composed of multiple atom types. So compounds are formed by the chemical combination of two or more different types of atoms. These atoms can be from the same element or from different elements. Another characteristics of a compound is having fixed chemical composition. So the relative amounts of the different atoms in a compound are always the same, regardless of the sample size or source. So compounds have a definite and unchanging chemical formula that represents their fixed composition. The following are the examples of compounds. So some common examples of compounds includes the water or the H2O, so it composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Another one is the carbon dioxide or the CO2. It composed of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. The last one is the table salt or NaCl. So it composed of one sodium atom and one chlorine atom. The following are the differences between the element and the compound. So the first one is the composition. So elements are made up of only one type of atom, while compounds are made up of two or more different types of atoms. Example, oxygen is an element while water is a compound made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Another differences between elements and compounds is the chemical formula. So elements have a simple chemical formula representing the type of atom such as H for hydrogen or F E for iron. So compounds have a more complex chemical formula that represents the specific arrangement and relative quantities of the atoms, such as H2O for water or CO2 for carbon dioxide. Another difference between element and compounds is the chemical bonding. In elements, the atoms are not chemically bonded to each other as they are all the same type of atom. While in compounds, the atoms of different elements are held together by chemical bonds which give the compound its unique properties. 
Another differences between elements and compounds is the physical and chemical properties. So elements generally have distinct physical and chemical properties such as melting point, boiling point, and reactivity, while compounds often have different physical and chemical properties compared to the individual elements that make them up. Example, hydrogen is a flammable gas while water is a liquid with very different properties. The second lesson is the kinetic molecular theory or KMT of matter. So now, before we proceed, let us define first what is KMT. So the kinetic molecular theory is a model that explains the behavior and properties of matter in terms of the motion and interactions of the tiny particles such as atoms or mo molecules that make up the substances. The following are the key principles of the kinetic molecular theory. The first one is the particles are constantly in motion. So the particles such as atoms or molecules that make up matter are always in the state of constant motion even in solids, liquids, and gases. The degree of motion varies depending on the state of matter with particles in gases having the highest kinetic and moving the fastest. The second principle of kinetic molecular theory are the spaces between the particles. So there are spaces or gaps between the particles that make up matter, so even the densest solids. The amount of space between the particles varies depending on the state of matter, with gases having the largest spaces and solids having the smallest. The third key principles of kinetic molecular theory is that principles attract each other. So the particles that make up matter are attacked or attracted to each other through intermolecular forces such as van der Waals forces or hydrogen bonds. The strength of the attractive forces varies depending on the type of particles and the state of matter, with solids have the strongest and intermolecular attractions. Another key principle of kinetic molecular theory is that particles move faster as the temperature increases or with the additional heat. So the kinetic energy of the particles, their energy of motion increases as the temperature of the substance increases. So when the heat is added to a substance, the particles gain more energy and begin to move faster, vibrate more, and collide with each other more frequently. This increased motion and kinetic energy can lead to changes in the state of matter such as melting, boiling, or evaporation as the particles overcome the intermolecular attractive forces.